Our Locked On Mavs host is here and ready, Nick. What is happening? Were you expecting this? <laughs> this is very oh, initial boy, thought right guys. now. I love that. This We're going to get your reaction. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks made a huge trade. They send Chris Osborne for Spencer Dinwiddie, Davis Bertans. This is a deal we thought that they possibly could do. The Mavs are looking for another ball handler, Josh. They are looking for another guy that can handle the ball because they've been playing – you know, Luca and Brunson a lot together. And when those guys, when you have one of them out of the lineup or when you have, you know, to sit both of them for whatever reason, the other night the Mavs had, you know, Luca and Brunson with five fouls in the, in the third quarter. Like, what do you do in those situations? You just turn to Trey Burke or what happens if one of those guys goes down for any reason? Luca gets, you know, ejected because he is really close to the technical threshold. Like, there's just so many reasons why this team ne needed another guy to handle the ball. And Chris Porzingis. I think this has been in the works for a long time. At the end of last season, Chris Porzingis almost all but asked for a trade from the Dallas Mavericks. And I think they've just been biding their time and biding their time and waiting for the point where, all right, we're going to find a team. Up your value, be a good soldier, hang out for a little bit, maybe uh, you know get a couple more post-ups. Jason Kidd will try to do his little player coach magic and try and figure out if we can up your value a little bit here. They've been holding him out for about a week now for you know bone bruise, random knee injury, random knee soreness that they've been talking about, trying to just keep him healthy, I think. And they finally found a, a suitor for him here. Yeah, look, um, the... The whole Porzingis thing has been kind of a, uh, like you said, a thing in the in the process. But getting getting Bertans back back, um, where where does this put the Mavs as far as like future moves? It feels like each one of these moves takes away from the potential to like fix the team later. Like okay, now you've got Dinwiddie and Bertans. You're going to be. It's not like you can uh, make a ton of moves to improve this team greater. Like I feel like you're you're starting to head towards. Not quite, but like starting to head towards Lakers territory. Like, how how many more assets do you really have now? To <laughs> Josh to, heading to towards Lakers territory, coming from the Celtics host, yeah, I take I'm that not, as a big compliment. I think I'm not I think, saying, I'm not saying you're there. Lakers I'm just saying territory. you took a left down that street. No, I see. I think that I think you you take the big contract of Porzingis that was a lot of people said was semi untradeable, right? He can't stay on the floor. Not sure what his fit is. You know, last year defensively he was horrible. This year he's been much better. But now you take that asset, you split it into two, right? I think you, you split it into two. You get off of Dinwiddie's money a year earlier. Uh, Davis Bertans is making what half of what Chris Ops Porzingis is, and so I think it makes them more flexible. Then in this off season around the draft, they're allowed to trade their draft pick this year, and then the more it's, you know, time goes on, they're allowed to trade future draft picks. And so I think they take this package and they package it in the off season around the draft or even, you know, right after that for something bigger later. So I think it makes them to use a football term that makes them more multiple, right? Like it makes them be able to do a couple different deals instead of we can only trade Porzingis for a massive other salary. Nick, do you think that it, this, you know, obviously with Bradley Beal having the surgery uh, to end his season. Is this any indication that the Wizards are looking at Porzingis at maybe not playing the rest of the year, that this knee bone bruise is actually something a little bit more significant and they're just going to say, well, you and Brad just sit over there. You can watch the games from the sideline and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys back here next year. Which is which sounds very similar to when the Mavericks traded for Kristaps Porzingis and they mm -hmm. just let him like stay out for, for a while and just let him sit and hang out until they got to next season. Man, Asking a question about Christoph Porzingis and injuries is I'm so glad I'm I'm done answering those questions now that he's not on the team anymore because it just was he would play eight games and then he would sit out five games for something random, for something else, for something here. So if you're asking a question about Porzingis injury, my answer is yes, right? It, it just seems like any every time every time you turn the corner, something else happens with, with him. And uh, it stinks for him because this year he had been playing really well. He had been, you know, playing defense at the best I've seen since he was in New York. His offense had been, you know, to a level. He wasn't hitting threes, but he was hitting his, you know, post-up shots. And he was getting some rhythm here and there. And he just could not stay on the court long enough to, you know, get enough of a run going to where he would, you know, uh, make a huge impact. 